Now, ChatGPT has just introduced its voice GPT, which is fantastic. I've been playing around with it. But what I'm seeing online is a lot of uh, kind of fun demonstrations, different accents that it can do and all of this different stuff, how fast it can rap and all of that. But what about actual useful things that it can do? Well, I'm going to give you six of them in this video. Uh, starting off with the first one, which is to do with mock interviews. Now, you can use ChatGPT to help you go through a mock interview and act as an employer while you are an, a potential employee. So it can help you get jobs. So we're going to cover that one now. And I've got my friend ready and waiting here. So ChatGPT, are you there? I'm here, Jason, ready to dive into this mock interview. All right. Well, here's the thing. I want to pretend that I'm going for a job as a web designer. You are going to be the interviewer and I'd like you to uh, start your questioning and, uh, get, you know, give me a tough interview for a moment. Absolutely. Let's get started. Welcome, Jason. Thanks for coming in today. Can you begin by telling me about a recent web design project that you're particularly proud of? Oh, that would be FastBots. So um, that's my AI chatbot platform. I designed the website for it um, using my uh, best knowledge that I've gained over the last 20 odd years uh, making websites. Impressive. Can you walk me through a challenge you faced during the FastBots project and how you overcame it? Yep. So when we first uh, started, we just had a very basic website crawler and that was not able to grab lots of pages at once from a website to be able to uh, index them all. So now we've built a fully scalable beast of a web crawler uh, running on Amazon Web Service. So it's fully scalable and we can do like five, ten thousand pages at a time. That's quite an achievement. How do you stay current with emerging trends and technologies in web design to ensure your skills remain sharp? I subscribe to a lot of different newsletters to do with uh, web design and uh, founders, you know, indie hacker, that kind of thing. And also follow a lot of really good people on X. Staying informed through newsletters and following industry experts is a smart move. What would you say is your greatest strength as a web designer? Um, I don't really have one individual greatest strength, I don't feel, but I have a, a lot of a good understanding of how everything works and can do a, 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 for reasonable graphics, reasonable copy um, and good enough to get the job done and get some sales coming in. Versatility is a great asset, especially in web design. All right. Being able to handle different what, what we'll do now, what we'll do now is we will stop this mock interview and we'll call that done. So there you go, guys. ChatGPT can really help you um, get questions about a potential job that you're going for if you're interested in uh, going for a particular role. The second thing that I really like about it, and this one is going to probably, let's be honest, kill quite a few companies, is its ability to teach languages. So ChatGPT? Yes, Jason. I Ready would to dive into some lovely. I would like to learn a little bit of basic Spanish. I'm going to Madrid on business next week, and I want to know some basic things that I might find useful. Can you teach me a few phrases? Absolutely. I'd be happy to help with some basic Spanish for your trip to Madrid. Let's start with some essential phrases. How about learning how to greet someone and introduce yourself? You can say, hola. Me llamo Jason. That okay. means, hello, my name is Jason. Okay, so I give, try? yeah, I'll give it a go then. So, um, hola, uh, me llamo Jason. Perfecto. That was great, Jason. Now, let's learn how to ask for directions. You can say, donde está el baño? Which means, where is the bathroom? Give it a shot. Uh, donde está, what was the bathroom word? El baño. El baño. So would... Donde está el baño? Exacto. Great job, Jason. That's a very useful phrase to know. Yeah, How probably about is. Ordering a. Perfecto. To order a coffee, mm -hmm. you can say quisiera un café, por favor. Ooh. That means I would like a coffee, please. 
Give it a try. Uh, just say it one more time for me. Sure. Quisiera un café, por favor. Quiese un café, por favor. Perfecto. You nailed it, Jason. That's a phrase you'll definitely use in Madrid. All right, thank you. That's, so that's a that's a demo of how it can teach you languages. And of course, it can do this for about 95 different languages. So fantastic. Another thing that I really like about it is if you just have it on in the background while you're reading a book. So I've got this book right here. You can see it's called uh, Psycho-Cybernetics. It's by Maxwell Maltz. Now, if I'm reading along with this book and I'm reading it out loud and I've got my friend here listening to it, then I can go and ask things about what it says in the book if I'm not really clear about it. So here's an example. So um, ChatGPT, just listen along with me, will you? Because I might need um, you to answer some questions. Got it, Jason. I'll listen along while you read and feel free to ask me any questions about the book. Okay, so I'm reading um, this chapter right now called How to Utilize the Power of Rational Thinking. It says, there is a widely accepted fallacy that rational, logical, conscious thinking has no power over unconscious processes or mechanisms and that to change negative beliefs, feelings or behavior, it is necessary to dig down and dredge up material from the unconscious. Now, ChatGPT, what does it mean by that? Because that makes no sense to me. It seems like the book is challenging the idea that our rational, conscious thoughts can't influence our unconscious mind. It suggests that instead of digging deep into our unconscious to change negative beliefs or behaviours, we can use our rational thinking to influence and change them. So, it's saying that our conscious, logical thoughts are more powerful in affecting our subconscious than we might think. Does that clear things up a bit? It does. Thank you. That's great. Thank you for helping me with that. Um, really good. So there's another example of how it can help you. If you're reading along, then you get stuck on anything or perhaps so you're studying and you're doing sort of essay research and things like that. Then you can have our friend here just help you out and uh, make things a little bit clearer for you. The other thing that it's really good at doing is a uh, dictating as well. Of course, you can use it as a dictator. So chat GPT, um, how would I use you as a dictator or oh, dictation? You can use me for dictation by simply speaking out loud and I'll convert your spoken words into text. For example, if you need to compose a letter or jot down notes, just start speaking and I'll transcribe it for you. You can say something like, write a letter to my team about the new project timeline and I'll take it from there. Want to give it a try? Uh, no, okay, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I just wanted to let the guys know here on the YouTube video. Do you want to say hi to everybody, by the way? Hello, everyone. Great to be here on Jason's channel. Hope you're finding these demos helpful. Brilliant. Okay, now the other thing um, that would be really interesting is if I'm watching a YouTube video and just like with the book here, I really don't understand exactly what they're trying to say and I want you to explain it to me um, in simple terms. So I've got this YouTube video. You just listen out um, for this and then you can explain to me when I've finished um, what it's really saying here. Is capture light. Plants can use light capturing molecules called pigments. Recall that visible light has different wavelengths, and those different wavelengths of light have different colors. If you've ever played with a prism before, you can see how light can be separated into a rainbow of colors due to different wavelengths. So a pigment that plants commonly use to capture light is called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll does a great job at absorbing red and blue light, but not so much green light. Chlor Whoa, that sounds pretty intense. So, so what is it talking about there and what, what, what light is it absorbing and how? So, that video is explaining how plants use pigments to capture light, focusing on chlorophyll. When light hits a plant, chlorophyll absorbs light, especially from the red and blue parts of the spectrum. However, it doesn't absorb green light well which is why plants appear green to us. Chlorophyll is crucial for photosynthesis, helping plants convert light energy into chemical energy. 
Got it. Pretty fast. Got it. Okay, that is pretty cool. Thank you for that uh, clarification there. So there you go, guys. There's another useful thing that it can do is it, it can it can explain videos whether that's on youtube or on the tv whatever just have it listen in and then it can give its opinion or explain something complicated for you um the next thing that i i like as well is also if you are watching something maybe you're watching a foreign movie and you don't want the subtitles you just want to try and enjoy each scene and then have it explain what's being said it's really good at listening in and then just telling you what was said so um chat gpt i'm just about to play a video now it's in a foreign language can you just tell me uh, what was said please absolutely jason play the video when you're ready and i'll listen in sweet bonjour les amis bienvenue dans ce nouvel épisode d'easy french aujourd'hui on se promène un peu entre les halles et le marais et on demande aux gens de nous dire ce qu'ils aiment faire le week-end on y va okay what what was she talking about The speaker was introducing an episode of Easy French. She mentioned that in this episode, they're walking around the Halles and Marais districts in Paris, asking people about their weekend plans. Sounds like a fun way to practice French. Love it. All right. Thanks ever so much for your help. Um, I'm just going to uh, also ask our viewers now, if you would like uh, to learn more about how to use AI, then jump into my free group. There's a link underneath the video that you can uh, just go and join. And then we've got over 11,000 members right now, all AI fanatics, um, sharing brilliant things that they've been learning online about how to use AI for business. So if you're really interested in how to get the most out of this new incredible AI technology that's available uh, to all of us now, then do come along and join my group. Um, so that's it from me. There's going to be another video after this one. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And ChatGPT, did you want to say goodbye to the viewers? Thanks for having me, Jason. Goodbye, everyone. It was great being part of this. Don't forget to check out Jason's group for more AI insights. There you go. ChatGPT gets the last word. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks very much.